Well, just last week we crossed that international border between Canada and the U.S. That's a big deal. And it is a big deal. International border is a big deal. <laughs> You're on a... Things you just need to know. Yes, so we're gonna talk about that today. We're gonna to help you guys out. This video is coming from a Canadian perspective. Kent and I are both Canadians. We live in Canada. This is our homeland. And so that's the perspective we are talking about today. That's right, eh? Eh? <laughs> and you're looking at traveling back and forth between the US and Canada. Stay tuned, this is a good video. Hey, so Lisa and I have crossed over from Canada to the United States and back at multiple crossings over the last number of years. Almost all of them in Western Canada. Yeah. I think every one of them in Western Canada, mm -hmm. um, even to Alaska and back. So we have some experience on Western Canada, but uh, almost all the time it's driving and a few times flying. How many border crossings are there? There's 119 land crossings between Canada and the United States. It's the longest international border in the world. It's crazy. I never yeah. knew that. That's awesome. Um, and just so you know, sometimes border crossings close. They do have yeah. hours of operation. Some of them are 24 hours. So depending on where you're going to cross, check the websites and find out uh, what their hours are. Yes. Speaking of websites, yes, you can actually check the uh, both the Canadian border services as well as the U.S. Customs border services. Yes. We'll put those links in the description below of this video so you can check those out. Pay attention. All the information we're sharing with you today is either from our personal experience or stuff we found on those websites. Yeah. And you can go find the same info and it will be up to date. So. Yeah, and sometimes there's like stuff that is just up to date as of yesterday. So make exactly. sure you be prepared when you get to the border. Lisa, Especially how do you Especially with this this coronavirus going around and you know, different things that get banned at different times of year, depending on certain things. I know I was reading in 2004, they had a big ban. The U.S. was banning um, Canadian beef, Canadian beef and Canadian beef products. Yeah. And so that included dog food. So if you were going to go down to the States for six months and you brought your dog's food, they would confiscate it at the border. So definitely check out those websites before you cross just to make sure there isn't anything odd. So how do we prepare to make sure that we can go across the border or come back to Canada? Okay, there's a whole list of things that we do to prepare for that. First yeah. of all, we always have a plan B because any border services agent can just deny your passage into their country. It's their country. They get to do that. So we always have a plan B in the back of our mind. If it ever happened that we were denied access into the U.S., yeah. we would have our backup plan ready to go. So right. I do recommend that. So this last time coming back to Canada, what did we have to prepare for this border crossing? Okay. This one right here. This one right here that we did like three days ago. That's well, right. A little longer. <laughs> anyway, first of all, have a passport. Make sure your passport is not going to expire in the next six months. Yes. That's a big deal. And people don't know that. They're like, oh, it expires in, in six months or in five months. I'm good. You're not good. You need to have a valid passport. Um, what else? Well, you need to know what you acquired while you're out of country. Uh, that's the, 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 the things that you're bringing back to Canada with you. That's right. So make sure that when you are in the U.S. that you keep all of your receipts, especially for um, automotive repairs. Yes. Because they almost always ask us that. Have you made any modifications to your vehicle? And you need to be able to document that. We'll, get, it, we'll get into the top 20 questions that they ask us 
later in the, oh, in okay. the video. Okay, so yeah. So anyway, just make sure that you keep your receipts for all of the stuff that you buy. Yes, and know the dollar amount in Canadian funds. And I was reading on the Border Services website that they care a lot about where your product was made, the one that you purchased in the States, because of our trade agreements between Canada, Mexico, and the US. So if it's one of those three countries, yeah. you're pretty good, you're clear, you're good to go. If it's any other country, that might be an issue. So pay attention to where your stuff has been manufactured. Oh, we want to make sure that when we're coming back across the line, that the things that are organic are uh, allowed to come back into Canada. Mm -hmm. And that includes wood manufactured products. Ooh, that's interesting. Yes. Okay. So when you get to the border and they ask you uh, certain questions related to uh, things that are organic, like uh, anything wood or wood manufactured, you need to let them know and they may need to see it. Yeah. They do reserve the right to inspect your vehicle. So when you are crossing the border, be prepared for that as well. And don't forget the little things you bought in Mexico that are made out of wood. That's right. You need to declare those. Yeah, so that's why we say check the website so that you know what you need to declare and what is fine. You need to have your story consistent. Hang on, hang on. Before we go there, okay. uh, when it comes to organics, like Kent was saying, that includes your food. So yes. they, they might ask you, are you bringing any fruits and vegetables? What meat products are you bringing across? Those kinds of things. And we have had things confiscated from us before, like potatoes. Potatoes. <laughs> That's Ooh. a big one. Uh, when our daughter came down into the States, she had all of her yellow peppers taken away from her. She was so sad. She's like, mom, I stocked up on peppers so I could eat them the whole way. That's right. <laughs> and they took them away. So who knew? They're, and I think their rules change a little bit too. So you I think never so. know. So just as of this week, there are two new questions that the Canadian Border Services agent may ask you. I bet you can't even guess what they're about. Yeah, just new. <laughs> they're gonna ask you, uh, and this is basically word for word. Have you been to Iran or China uh, in the last 14 days? Or have you been ill in the last 14 days? two new questions you're gonna again, have to have an answer honesty is the best policy don't try and hide anything no. because you'll you'll just it'll, you'll make things worse for yourself there's a show called what's it called border services or border patrol border patrol i think yeah take a look at that show and yeah. you'll say okay that's it i'm gonna be honest no matter what it's crazy. and when someone's story changes oh that's yes. a, that that goes downhill yeah that's why you have to be honest so your story doesn't change that's right yeah the big question the big question how long can you guys stay in the states Yeah, the big question, the big question, how long can you guys stay in the States? The answer is 182 days in a 12 month period. Yes. That is the standard answer. That's the short answer. That's the short answer. Um, there are other, there are ways you can get around that. You can actually stay longer in the States, but you have to jump through extra hoops and you have to get extra visas or green cards and all that kind of stuff. So yes. the standard answer is 182 days. If you're a Canadian citizen, yeah. If you are a landed immigrant in Canada, you could only stay for 90 days. That's right. So it's a different rule. Um, they want to know for sure, the U.S. Border Services wants to know for sure that you are not going to just go into the U.S. and never leave. That's right. So they want to make sure that you are going to come back to Canada. They want to make sure that you can support yourself while you're down there and they don't want you taking jobs away from Americans. <laughs> or, <laughs> so no working. The, the no working while or you're in the US. Or even volunteering actually, that's a big deal. We aren't even allowed to technically volunteer while we're in the US. So there are a lot of rules for Canadians to go visit the American great country. <laughs> that's right. But they want us to come down. They do, yes. Yeah, now there's two agencies that are at play here. One is the IRS. There's three really. Well, there are because three. Because there's, there's IRS, so yeah. there are tax implications if Canadians stay down too long. That's right. There is immigration, and they're the ones that say 182 days in a 12-month in a period. And then there are your Canadian rules. So yeah. as Albertans, we have provincial health care. We have to be in Alberta for five months out of every year. Yep. So that we can maintain our Alberta residency. So for healthcare reasons. For healthcare. So there are lots of things that go into play. We're not even talking about weather. <laughs> yeah. So our rule of thumb, personally, 
because IRS is like a multi-year uh, equation. We just say, we're just gonna come into the States for five months. Yeah, keep it simple. Yeah. That's how we roll. Rule of thumb, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, you're good, yeah. see you later. And also we wanna make sure that when we go into Canada, kind of in the spring, that we have a good number of months in Canada before we wanna leave Canada and go back to the States for the fall. So That's right. we're always calculating those days and those months. That's and why we came home early. Are really complicated, like over the course of the three years. Like yes. There's a three-year formula where it's like year one is 182 days. Don't even talk and about it's it. It's just so it's a mess. confusing. Anyway, as a rule of thumb, 182 days out of 12 months. The questions that we get asked and you may get asked at the border are as follows: Number one, where do you live? Number mm -hmm. two, don't be cheeky on that one. <laughs> yeah. Everywhere I park it. No. Yeah, no, don't say no, that. No, no, no. Not <laughs> here. Don't say that. Number one. I mean, the first one. Where do I live? Number two. How long are you going down? Or when how, will you be back? When will you be back? Yes. Yeah. Number three. Do you have $10,000 or less in cash? That's an important one. I think it's $10,000 or more that they're concerned about. Yes. Anyway, $10,000 in cash or monetary items like traveler's checks or whatever yeah that has to be declared so don't be stuffing the cash on your mattress thinking you're good and take 20 grand down to the u.s that will be a problem for you that's right and they also ask what is your license plate number <laughs> oh yeah they ask us especially because it's only on the back <laughs> yes exactly now they may ask you some odd questions like so who owns this who owns this rv so know your answers on that too what do you mean? They'll ask you. Will they? To the border. Who owns this vehicle? Okay. Yeah. 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 They also want to know if you've done any repairs to your vehicle. So, oh, big deal. Or modifications. Yes. So make sure that you document all of that, keep your receipts, and have reasons for why you do that. If it's an upgrade emergency-wise, it won't matter. Like our front tire blowout. Yeah. But if you go to the States and get your engine rebuilt or your transmission rebuilt, you better document why you did that yeah. in the States. And along with that whole declaring things and keeping track of things that you've purchased. The reason is because the government of Canada reserves the right to charge you GST on everything that you purchased in the States, as well as to charge you a duty fee. So- Is that the grand sales tax? The grand sales tax. <laughs> Grande. GST stands for goods and services tax. It is a 5% tax that all Canadians pay on all goods and services in Canada. On top and of the I other I did not know that they could charge tax. you that as you bring stuff oh, yeah. into Canada, but that is a thing. So yeah. So make sure you have a little bit of cash in your bank account. Just Ability, in case. yes. I'm good. Oh, maybe That's, not. I'm going to have to, I think we're going to have to move that. I don't think. Is it going to touch? Yeah, you're touching it. Don't. I don't think you're going to be able to hear that. Since October the 6th. That's it. Thank you. It sure is a privilege to be able to uh, experience both countries. It really is. And we are thankful that the US government and the Canadian government are friendly with each other. Yeah. So if you're looking at exploring Canada this summer, yeah, do it. Do it. It's worth it. It's great. Now, all, right. all right. One last thing that is really important for you to know before you leave Canada and go to the US. Well, if you're, if you're flying, it's mandatory. They're going to say, what is the address of your destination? Yeah. So make sure you know the address of maybe the first campground that you're going to or your friend's house or wherever you're going, as well as maybe your final destination. So yeah. if you're going to be spending a month at a campground in Arizona, know what the name of that campground is and the address. I always get so nervous when we go oh, across the border. There's one more. Oh, guns. 
Oh yes, you will not be allowed to bring your guns into Canada unless you have proper documentation. So, and well, that's a big I don't deal. even know what that entails. I have no idea what that even. So don't ask me. <laughs> Bear spray is fine though. Yeah. I asked all of yeah. the border uh, crossings when we went on our motorcycle trip. Bear spray? Oh, that's fine. Yeah. Bear spray? That's fine. So if you're if you have guns and you're planning on coming into Canada, research that like crazy because that will be a very big deal. And no drugs. That's Not right. even marijuana, actually. Even though mar marijuana is legal in British Columbia, all of Canada actually. Yeah. And it is legal in some of the border states. Yeah, not at the federal level but at the border. But when you're crossing the border, you cannot bring that back and forth. And in any form, like even CBD oil or anything like that. So do not uh, try and bring that across. And if you are coming to Alberta this summer, look us up. We don't know where we're gonna be yet. We're still looking for work camping jobs, but when we do, we'll let you know and yeah. you guys can, can look us up and we can get together for coffee. Maybe go camping together, who knows. My name's Lisa. And my name's Kent and we're Living Light RV. We are grabbing life by the tail as we cross international borders. We hope you guys are having a great week and we'll see you next Thursday. We actually had the GoPro running the whole time and yep. you can hear our conversations as we approach the border and you will hear the level of anxiety, especially in my voice. <laughs> and this happens every time and oh, I yeah. get super cranky and I'm just like, ah, what, what is this? What is that? <laughs> so don't judge me. <laughs> All right, babe, navigate me to the correct lane. All right. All trucks and commercial vehicles must use truck lane. Do not use the truck lane. We're not a commercial vehicle. Where are we telling you to go? This um, one? Passenger vehicles. Honey, give me a second. I have to read. Fair enough. And don't speed. I don't know what you mean. Oh, it's flashing red, so I can see that it's flashing red. The whole thing it flashes red on both sides. It flashes red on the front and on the back. Listen to me. Leave it there. Take the little cup. Move it over this way and straight for there. Thank you. Probably, probably not. Still flashing right out the front window, just That's so you cool. know they can see it. That's cool. oh, don't judge me. <laughs> That's right. We're, I do love Kent, and we're good. <laughs> we pulled onto the road, and it's like, oh look, there's the border straight ahead. I said, do you have our passports ready? All right. All right. The passports. <laughs> the passports. <laughs> so we're including it in this video for your entertainment purposes only. Like I said, don't judge. Have fun. Oh, when you're gone, you are a traveler.